So the Vico 95 was a highly recommended racket by a lot of the people on my channel actually. And it's a racket that's kind of been on my radar, especially with my journey on trying to extend rackets. That's been a thing for me. So as somebody that wants to extend a tennis racket, you have to keep an eye out for rackets that have a pretty low swing weight. Cause when you extend it half an inch or so, which is what I was planning to do, you're going to bump the swing weight up about 20 points. So you have to keep that in mind when you are getting a racket with the intention of extending it. Anything beyond that, I feel like 350, 360 territory, it starts to really creep on being unplayable, unplayable. So yeah, the V495 seemed to fit a lot of my criteria in terms of the type of racket that I might want, the way in which I understood that I, or I heard that it plays, but also the swing weight. So it seemed like it was open to the modifications that I might make. And this racket is extended. I use the XDP butt cap, which I mentioned in a lot of my videos, and that extended this half an inch. It's a very easy modification you can do yourself as far as racket mods go. And yeah, I, I might make another video on those XDP butt caps, but I will leave a link in the description for you guys to check that out for one that I already did do if you guys are interested in doing that kind of thing. It's really easy. So one thing that I learned really quickly with this racket is that you want to probably get thinner gauge strings, like maybe 17s or possibly 18s. I generally never go to 18, but maybe 17. I was always a 16 gauge guy but now I'm kind of a 17 gauge guy again. And I think this racket kind of pushed me to be more so of a thinner gauge guy than a thicker gauge guy. Although I know 17 is kind of in the middle, so you know. But yeah, I struck this with 16s and I think maybe at like 48 or 50, terrible, that felt awful. And I'm glad I mentioned that in one of my YouTube stories because people are like, no, 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 you gotta string this racket lower and maybe use a thinner gauge string. And I'm like, okay, I, I understand. Because the thing is like, I have an 18 by 20 racket that I did a similar thing to and it didn't feel so bad. And uh, that was my Angel TC95. But yeah, that racket, I also strung that racket with thinner gauge strings at a lower tension and it didn't feel that different. So, I mean, geez, some rackets are just so, they're gonna, the experience is gonna vary so much depending on the strings that you put in and what tension. And other rackets, maybe not as much. It's, it's really quite mind blowing um, for me as someone that's started a relatively new uh, YouTube channel here. I am kind of surprised at how disorienting some of the experience can be. So that's a lesson for you guys. If you guys think that you know a string or you know a racket or you know what strings and tension you generally like, a lot of that opinion that you have is probably dictated on the kind of racket that you have or just the racket that you have. So yeah, you, you might think you know what you like on a racket like this and then you go over to something that's you know a little bit different and it's terrible in that racket. So. That being said, I, I would categorize this racket as being extremely string sensitive. I don't think most rackets are as string sensitive as this. I know it's a 95, but I have another 95 that's not as string sensitive as this. And it's an even denser pattern. And yeah, I think I made my point. But yeah, I learned very quickly that you want to go with the thinner gauge at a lower tension. So I started doing 17s like in the mid 40s, like low mid 40s, maybe 45, 43, etc. And that is really where I think this racket wants to be. So once I got the string gauge and the tension figured out, I started to get to know the racket as I think that this racket is intended to be known. And I appreciated the versatility of this racket. I noticed that it gets good spin and it gets decent power, although it is quite hard to generate. I think you have to commit a lot to quite a, a lot of your shots. And well, it's a very well-rounded well racket. I will say that it does everything pretty well, but I think the big compromise that you make with this racket is the ability to generate power. A lot of the times that's the kind of thing that I don't necessarily shy away from, but it was a little different with this racket. I felt like it was, it was always really hard to generate power. I mean, it felt like it took so much to get the ball with a lot of spin nice and deep into the court. And that's kind of my play style. So I didn't necessarily want a racket that just makes that harder for me for no reason, but it's not like that doesn't come without some pros as well. I do feel like there is almost a laser like precision in a lot of situations from the baseline with this racket. But at the same time, I really didn't feel that on the volleys. I don't like this racket at the net so much. I don't know what it is. And I just did a, a video on the V 97 pro here. And one of the biggest differences for me is how much more I like the V 97 at the net than the 95. You guys might think of the 95 being a slightly denser pattern. It's also a 1620. So it's got an extra sting in the cross. You might think that a racket like this would have a little bit more control and a little bit more something at the net, but I really didn't feel that way at all. It just feels a little bit unstable. And I don't know, there's just something where the V core 97, it has something magical kind of going on about it. And the V core 95 kind of lackluster and disappointing at the net. But I guess the, the really good thing about this racket is that you really get kind of what you expect for the most part. Once you get to another racket, kind of what you put in is what happens. 
And I feel like the power response is very linear. I was talking also about the Vcore 97 where I feel like it's more easy to generate power sort of on the lower end of the power, right? Like if I sort of give like a 50% power shot or something, the power off the Vcore 97 is quite good. Whereas on this one, it's just kind of like, eh, I probably have to hit it quite a bit harder to get the same amount as I would with the Vcore 97. But if I'm hitting really, really hard, like maximum power, I feel like this will still return more power, whereas the Vcore 97 will have run out somewhere around like 90%. So there's like a 10% power loss at the top end that I feel like I'll never get back with the Vcore 97, whereas I feel like with the Vcore 95, I will. But throughout the entire spectrum of my power, I do feel like overall, it's always more work to generate that power with this racket than it was with the Vcore 97. So for most of the shots, I felt a little more comfortable with power on the Vcore 97 than on the Vcore 95. But honestly, both of the rackets for me at the end of the day are a little bit underpowered, more so that one on the top end and this one just overall. Like every shot feels like it's more work with the Vcore 95 than I want it to be. Now, this isn't necessarily a reason to shy away from the racket. I also feel like if you're trying to develop your game, a racket like this could be good to keep around because it sort of forces you to commit a lot to your swing. I have rackets too right now where I feel like there's a lot of situations where I have to kind of calm down. I have to make sure I don't hit it too hard or I, I have to put a lot of extra spin on it to keep the ball back in the court. But this racket isn't one of those rackets. It's just, it kind of has a very predictable commitment response, I would say, to like what you want the ball to do. So it, it constantly demands that you hit the ball really well, I guess I would say. Like you really hit through the ball, you hit hard, you have like a full fluid swing motion. I think that kind of thing, just to get that down is really good. So I almost kind of feel like this is a really great racket for calibrating or training your tennis or developing your tennis maybe, but ultimately like in a set or when I'm rallying or something like that, I want something that gives me a little bit more power. And sometimes I feel like a little bit more comfort. Sometimes I feel like this racket is surprisingly not comfortable despite some of the specs, but people recognize that it's a really string sensitive racket. And obviously the pattern is more dense because the head size is kind of small and the string pattern has an extra cross as opposed to a 1619, this is a 1620. So I like the density, but there's just something kind of uncomfortable about the racket. I don't quite know what it is, but I would almost describe this racket to have sometimes somewhat of like a dead metallic feeling. It almost feels like sort of a, like a dull baseball bat sometimes on some shots. And I don't quite understand what that is, but I don't really feel that on my other rackets. And I have other rackets in the V-Core line, like the V-Core 98, and I have a V-Core 100 now um, that I'm demoing. So yeah, that's another video. I am demoing the V-Core 98 again, but yeah, this racket really stands out in the V-Core lineup. I've heard people say that this racket almost maybe, maybe needs a line of its own or something, and I kind of get that. I kind of understand why they would say that, but I don't know. The, the marketing decisions racket brands make or whatever, you know? But yeah, it is very different, right? It has a, it has a more dense pattern and it's the smallest head size. It kind of, it's kind of funny to me also that the V-Core 95 would be a 1620. Like, why wouldn't the V-Core 98 be a 1620? Why would you make the smaller head, which already has a denser string pattern, just because, well, it's not a denser string pattern, it's more of a denser drill pattern, right? Like, all the, all the little squares are a tiny bit smaller on the string bed on a 95 than it would be on a 98 if the drill pattern is equally distributed along the head size, right? You guys follow that? I don't know, I feel like it's a lot of words I'm throwing out there, but... Ultimately, the string pattern is already more dense because the head size is a little bit smaller, so everything's a little bit closer together. And on top of that, you guys are gonna add another cross string. So now, the smallest head size in the lineup also has the densest string pattern on top of already being the smallest head size. To me, that seems a little bit funny. I wish that they made like a 1620 version of the 98 or something, I think that would be awesome. But for whatever reason, it is the 95, and, and I guess some people really love that for what it is, but me personally, I wish a couple of things were a little bit different. I ultimately decided that I don't love how the racket feels. There's something a little bit dead and metallic about it. I wouldn't necessarily say that it hurts or it's painful, but it's definitely not quite comfortable or pleasant. And it is a very string sensitive racket. So again, if you get this racket, get a thinner gauge string. Maybe I wouldn't go any higher than 17s and string it lower. Like honestly, string it at 45 or something. That's a good place to start and see if you want to go lower. I, would be a little bit surprised if you wanted to go in the 50s. That, that just doesn't sound like the way to go with this racket, honestly, but you know, everyone's different and every string is different, but uh, I hit with polys exclusively. I don't hit with multi-filaments, I suppose if you do, or even gut, you might have a slightly different experience, but still 
regardless, if that is your string setup of choice, I think whatever, whatever you understand at the end of the day is that this racket will probably want to be strung lower than whatever you're used to. So yeah, that's my review of the VQ195 and that is ultimately why I'm not going to be keeping it. It was a good time. I feel like I appreciated the pros and cons of this racket and I really appreciate the suggestion of this racket because it was one that was on my radar and ultimately I got it and I liked it and I appreciated it, but I ultimately just think that maybe it's not the best for my game or the best for how I want to play and I don't necessarily love how it feels, but I can certainly play some good tennis with this racket and yeah. I can see why somebody would want it. So hopefully this video helps you make an informed decision on whether you want to get one or not. All right, I will see you guys in the next one. And I will also talk about my uh, updated perspective on the, uh, what is it? The Babolat Pure Aero VS. All right, I'll see you guys in that video or another video. Thanks for watching.